Hello YouTube friends. Um, been getting uh, quite a few requests for some videos that uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on here. Get my music staying arranged so I don't hit my headstock. Um, got a few um, inquiries about uh, a couple of the songs that I've written lately and uh, one of which is Legacy and um, you know a lot of people wanting to know the chords to these songs that I write so that they can uh, go back and play along um, and that's you know pretty good high compliment uh, in my opinion and I appreciate your inquiry so I decided to go back to Legacy and uh, do a little lesson on that but also not only that but do kind of a lesson on songwriting itself and the dynamics of a song and how songs made up how you can write songs um, and for that we're going to go to the key of A we're going to put our capo right here and the uh, way I use a capo is um, you always want to make it close to, not exactly on, but very close to the fret so that it's, when you adjust it or when you clamp it on, it doesn't cause uh, the string to go sharp. Uh, for example, you may or may not be able to hear this. If I push the string um, right here close to the edge of the fret versus in the middle of the string, there's a buzz there in the middle of the, of the fret, I mean. Uh, because the closer you are to the fret, the less pressure you have to put on, which helps save your hands uh, from cramping and from, you know, various things, that, uh, complications that come up. So the less pressure you have to have, the closer you are to the fret. Well, if you're in the middle, using that same pressure causes a buzz, so therefore I have to press harder to cause the string to keep from buzzing. And when you press harder, the, the note actually becomes sharp. can hear the variation uh, in the pitch of that a note and that's because you know you're pressing harder so the same idea is with the, with the uh, capo if you put it in the middle of the fret not only going to cause buzzing but you have to tighten it up even more so which causes the string to, to sharpen there it's kind of like the frets act as two points and if you put like uh, say a wooden beam across these two points and you step on it, it begins to bend and the same thing the string does the same thing uh, it begins to bend so you want it close to the fret and you want it just tight enough the way I do mine is I, I pull it up and put it where it needs to be and then I give the string a few rakes I look at it this is one of the adjustable ones I'm using a page capo and uh, I get it to where it line up right on there and sometimes you might have to take the capo on the base side and kind of make a diagonal not that much of one but just a little bit of one to compensate for tuning depending on the strings you have these are GHS strings uh, I've had them on about a week maybe a little less and I played one practice with them and uh, they're just regular fossil bronze and then what I do is I'll strum it to all the strings sound through but not only that I'll do like a G run there's a, a buzz on that G, I'll tighten it a couple more turns, and then I'm ready to go, okay? So that's how I use a capo, and when you're not using I'll just store it up here. Um, but let's begin on Legacy here now. Uh, the first part of it starts, it's kind of like the little one potato, two potato thing uh, of a bluegrass song. You know, something like uh, Cherokee Shovel. Go rush. Or in Blackberry Blossom. Uh, which, by the way, now that I think about it, I probably need to do a lesson on that. Um, let's see. But that is where the, the legacy began. Is and all I'm doing is I'm placing my. It's kind of like a C shape. If you made your C and moved it up two frets, one, two, just these bottom two fingers here on the D and the B strings. Uh, the D's on the fourth fret. The B string is on uh, third fret, and you leave the G open. 
because this is your G2 when you hammer on to that uh, fifth fret on the D string. Which is why you want to have both of these strings pretty much in tune together. There's a little bit of variation, but it's good enough to keep. And from there, I'm just going between those three strings. Um, at a backwards and forward movement. So it's two upstrokes on the uh, B and the G string, and then one down on the D. To start it off, it's down, down on the G, and then up, up, down. Coming back to the G every now and then. Same thing. But I do a little pull off. So I got a descending thing. And then from there, um, I'm using that middle finger to go to the second fret of the D string and using my pinky to uh, go where this finger was on the third fret. That's the, the note that stays consistent throughout that is the B, uh, B string on the third fret. Okay. So. Now from there, I make, I'm barring my finger to the third fret, kind of like an F, sh F, but not making the actual F. My G, my middle finger is still on the D string with a G ringing open. Then, and then walk up to a C, which is a C with an added ninth there. And then I do it again and use the open D to transition from here to here. Okay, and from there, that's why I'm doing that, I'm kind of introducing that high note on the second part. The first time. The second time it's... Okay. Up. Up. Down. So it's pull up, uh, hammer on. The cool thing about that is, is what I was thinking of, not only the one potato, two potato, but the fact of the major scale, when you descend it, and you use other things to complement that the descending uh, major scale line, it really sounds amazing. That's the major scale. And the funny thing about that is, is the song that was in my head was, uh, I think it's Mama I'm Coming Home by Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> Except he does it in D, I think, but I'm not sure. But that's what I was thinking about, and I thought, well, let's, let's descend, but add some other stuff with it. Okay, so that's where that came from. Now, in the verse, um, here's where songwriting comes into play. There's certain things in this song that I wanted to be precise. For one thing, at the end of the, each verse, there is a uh, line that repeats itself. At the end of the first verse, it talks about, He prays your soul to keep If the Lord should come to take her away Okay, so I wanted there to be a stop there. 
emphasize, you know, um, that part of the song. Take her away. And the important thing is not only does my guitar stop, but everything else in the band stops. Like there's no banjo rolls, there's no uh, mandolin chucks, chops, there's no bass. It's just when I do that, he hits the C note there. In this case, you know, it's a D note because of the capo, but I'm referring to it as if there's no capo, so he hits that main note there. Uh, and that's important. I want that to be there. And just as part of the song, it's just the way, when you write a song, you write it the way that you feel it needs to be written. And not only that, here's the thing about songwriting. Don't, don't expect it to be perfect the first time around. Um, if you do that, you'll never get the first line written. Uh, that's one thing that I learned, and it's a hard lesson to learn because you, if you're a perfectionist like I am, you want to get it just right, and then that causes you to stifle your creativity. It causes you to have writer's block. It causes you to have, you know, guitarist block. You can't think of anything to do. Um, put something on paper and go from there. Uh, you can tweak it later, which is what I do. Half the time, you know, when I write a song, it's not perfect the first time around whenever I write a song, uh, but as I go on, we, I change things about it. Even yesterday at practice, I was, I'm going to change something about Legacy to make it on our next album, to make it where it can actually play on the radio. Apparently, you can't have anything over four minutes to be considered ro uh, radio worthy if you're a bluegrass person. I don't know, but I'm going to have to cut out some of the breaks in the middle, which doesn't really hurt the song any. Uh, in fact, it makes it a little more fluid and keeps going, you know, tell the story so there's no time in the middle to feel. So, uh, with that said, I wanted that to be there, and then what that is is um, take her away, her away, 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 and then this part just feel her. So that it does that three times. It just nothing's going on, but I decide to assign somebody to a break, a mandolin break here, one that does this, you know, or a guitar break. But that was just feeling. It didn't really seem right, and the rest of the band thought so too. So when I took those breaks out, it seemed to flow a lot better, transition straight into the next verse instead of going her way and then playing chords again. Um, but when you write a song, it happens. It changes, um, and you have the right to change it. You wrote it, so. That's the best thing about it. Uh, 